take on a Monday. Good morning, everybody. Hope you all had a wonderful weekend, especially all the mothers out there. Skip Bayless, Stephen A. Smith, Molly Karam. Gentlemen, how we doing? How Good. you doing? How are you? Good morning. How's everybody? Good. Good. Ready to go? I'm always ready. Let's roll. All right. Let's talk some playoffs. That's where we're going to start things off. We are now down to the best of three between the Spurs and Thunder. After the two games split over games three and four over the weekend, Kawhi Leonard led the Spurs to victory with 31 points in game three. But then Kevin Durant topped Kawhi with a 41-point performance in OKC's game four win. Stephen A., what was the difference in games three and four this weekend? Well, the difference was twofold, Molly, Skip. One was the greatness of Kevin Durant come shining through, uh, considering the level of explosiveness he displayed uh, yesterday, particularly in the second half. I think he had like 26 in the second half. I think he had like 17 in the fourth quarter. Uh, he showed up, and he played like the superstar that he is and propelled them to victory, which even this series at 2-2, because had they gone down 3-1, to one, it would be over in a couple of days, and the San Antonio Spurs would be moving on to the Western Conference Finals because they weren't going to lose a game five to Oklahoma City being up 3-1. So in that regard, I give him a lot of credit. But I also want to give some credit to the combination of Kevin Durant and Russell Westbrook, not just because Russell Westbrook had 15 assists, but also, unlike Game 3, when in the last three, three and a half minutes or so, they combined for three pivotal turnovers. They didn't take care of the basketball. Russell Westbrook on two occasions, Kevin Durant on an errant pass. Uh, but also uh, because, obviously, with them not turning the ball over and being as effective as they were as a combo, uh, you got to give credit where credit is due. And it's not just the 15 assists on the part of Russell Westbrook, Skip. It's the fact that he was so critical of himself in the aftermath of Game 3. Obviously, I was there uh, Friday night at the game and, and, and watching him during the press conference and beyond. He was very hard on himself because he knew that uh, there were shots that he should not have taken. I never heard that from him before, but he knew there were shots that he should not have taken. Uh, he knew that there was a level of aggression he should not have been displaying in terms of taking those shots. Uh, probably should have gotten the ball to KD a little bit more, etc. because he, he, he hit three of his six shots in the fourth quarter on Friday night. Uh, but in the end, recognizing whatever mistakes that you made in, um, in, in Game 3, coming back and making amends for that in game four the way that he did, combined with the greatness of a Kevin Durant who showed up and played the way we all know that he's capable of playing, being 6 feet 10, 6 11, with a 7 6 wingspan, with the ability to shoot or to pull up from 30, has a handle to go with it. He's his own freak of nature, and there's no reason why he should be a bit timid in any way offensively, particularly when the game is on the line, or ineffective I might add, uh, because he's offensively efficient as well. And so when you look it from that perspective and understand that they they both came back and, and and propelled their team to victory in game four i think those are the two reasons the greatness of kevin durant the unselfishness and the self-awareness of russell westbrook those are the two ingredients as to why they propelled uh themselves to victory in game four all good points one point that just struck me you were there on friday night I wish you had stayed last night because you brought good luck to our Spurs on Friday night, right? <laughs> or it, bad luck to OKC. Well, or maybe. Bad luck to OKC. So I wish you had <laughs> stayed, but you couldn't stay last night, unfortunately for us, because they are now our Spurs because we both picked them to win the series. And I'm assuming we are sticking by our Spurs in seven predictions despite what we saw last night, correct? Yeah. Yes, but you'll forgive me. I couldn't, admit, I couldn't stay there because... It was Mother's Day. You oh, know where I was yesterday. okay. <laughs> that works. Well, right. I wish I could have been there because my mother lives in Oklahoma City, but she there knows I love her, and I talked to her, and I sent flowers. I did it all Ms. yesterday. I got it. I got it. Hi, I got Levita. It. She's watching right now. <laughs> all right, so back to Molly's question. What was the yeah. big – look, the big difference last night was what I feared it would be. The more desperate team playing at home with two of the best three players in the world – won the game the way they should have won the game. The Thunder just wanted that game more than my Spurs ultimately wanted that game. Ultimately, the Thunder played harder. They played smarter. They fought on defense. Coach Popovich said after the game, they just out-toughed us, and that's exactly what happened. Kevin Durant said it was as loud in that building as he had ever heard it. So I congratulate the Thunder fans because I think they played a sixth man role last night, although there were six, seventh, and eighth men who did contribute last night in shocks to me. But now back to the key basketball difference. Obviously, on Friday night when you were there, Mr. Smith, 
Russell Westbrook took 31 shots, just too many for the point guard to take. He made only 10 of those. Meanwhile, Kevin Durant took only 18 shots on Friday night. He made 10 also. He just didn't get enough shots. And we know what the outcome was. Spurs won that game. Then last night, I thought Russell Westbrook went out of his way, as you suggest, to make sure that Kevin got plenty of shots. So he winds up getting 25 last night, thanks to Russell Westbrook, and he made 14 of them. He went nuclear on my Spurs. And to your point, when Kevin Durant does that, it's over, man. I mean, Kawhi couldn't deal with him, the Defensive Player of the Year, two-time. Danny Green couldn't deal with him. David West couldn't deal with him because nobody could have dealt with him. 22 of his 25 shots last night, Kevin Durant's were contested shots. Well, if you're going to make that many contested shots, you're going to win that game at home and ultimately, especially in the fourth quarter, Kevin Durant was just too much. He made six out of six shots in the fourth quarter alone, and it was a wipeout. And I must tell you, Mr. Smith, I was a little concerned because for the first time in this series, in the four games so far, my Spurs unleashed the beast. Not their beast, Oklahoma City's beast. Got unleashed in the fourth quarter, and the roof fell in on my Spurs. I I'm gonna remind you, they were up six with 11 minutes left in that game. That's pretty good, be up six. Once again, they looked in control. And at that point, two very unlikely Oklahoma City Thunder hit the two turning point shots, not just in this game, but in this series so far. All of a sudden, Randy Foy hit a three from the corner, and then Enos Kanter hit another three. I'm like, what? And all of a sudden, from up six, it was even, and that building exploded. That set the stage for Kevin Durant to go nuclear. Meanwhile, may I please do this, if you will allow me. Go ahead. I'm objective about my Spurs. While Kevin Durant was going six for six in the fourth quarter, my new big two, Kawhi, LaMarcus Aldridge, went a combined 0 for 7 in the fourth quarter. Kawhi Leonard on Friday night came up superstar big in the fourth quarter, had 13 fourth quarter points. Last night, my man Kawhi goose egged it in the fourth quarter. We've been talking about, is he a superstar yet or just a star? Well, last night he was just a star. He had terrific stretches in the first three quarters, but when it was money time, Kawhi was not to be found. This is where he hasn't quite made that next leap into superstardom. I needed him. He wasn't there. LaMarcus got only two shots, missed those two shots. Oklahoma City ended up making nine threes. My Spurs went two for 12 from three. If you're going to go two for 12 on the road in a playoff game, you're probably going to lose it. And I credit Oklahoma City because they were hellacious on defense, on catch and shoots. They were all over every spur coming off every pick. Nobody could get untracked and unleashed on my side. So it was Oklahoma City's night. I don't like it that from up six, it, it was 32 to 12 the, uh, the rest of the way. Think about that, Stephen A. They got outscored by 20 over the last 11 minutes. The point differential in the fourth quarter was the second worst in a playoff game in Pop's coaching career. Not a good sign. So I'm going to be objective about this. I don't love how much momentum the Thunder are going to be able to take to San Antonio for a pivotal game five, but sometimes things just switch up. I'm sticking with my game, my Spurs and seven pick. Well, the, you know, so am I simply because of game seven in San Antonio. I think they'll be up for that, and I don't think the open shots that they had available to them last night is something that they'd miss in a game seven uh, or a game five for that matter. I think that that's what bodes well for them. I see both teams protecting their home court uh, for the rest of the way unless Kevin Durant goes berserk and yep. is absolutely positively no way. To me, that's the X factor. It's going to have to be Kevin Durant, which is apropos because this is a guy that's approaching free agency. Much is being made about where he will end up playing, whether he'll stay in OKC or move beyond it. Obviously, him being universally recognized, one of the top three players in the world. It's one of those situations where it may very well, ironically, come down to a moment, a defining moment in the career of Kevin Durant at this particular juncture, where if San Antonio protects their home court and then OKC goes back and protects their home court and they're 3-3 and a game. Yep. Seven is forced. We know that it comes down to superstars at that particular moment, and Kevin Durant is a superstar. Yep. And so because he is a superstar, your all odds are going to be how is he going to perform under such duress. The only way to avoid that is to win the next two games. Uh, but when you look at what transpired, you got to remember the Spurs shot 7 of 21 in the fourth quarter yesterday. Skip, a lot of those shots were open shots. They just didn't make them.
They just missed them. And so when you, if you're a coach, you're Greg Popovich, and the system that you're employing, and you're seeing guys literally standing out there taking pictures, hollering at their wife or their girlfriend, saying, hey, how you doing? I hope all is well before they take a shot for crying out loud. And they still miss it. What more can you do as a coach? Ultimately, you've got to hope that shots fall. Sometimes they do. Sometimes they don't. You can tell the difference between somebody that's playing bad and somebody that's just missing shots. Yep. Kawhi Leonard just missed shots yesterday. LaMarcus Aldridge has just been missing shots over the last two games. He shot 8 for 21 in game three. And so when you look at it from that perspective, you got to ask yourself, do you think this is going to continue? The thing about San Antonio is now that Kawhi Leonard and LaMarcus Aldridge is the focus and the cornerstones for that franchise, you got to ask yourself, what can they do offensively? You know what they'll do in effort. You know what they'll be able to do defensively. But what will they do offensively? That that's a question mark for San Antonio. Yeah. The question for OKC is, Kevin Durant, are you going to be that superstar that we all know you to be? And if I might, I need to pay my respects to another superstar, at least former superstar in this series. And speaking of irony, remember what you were saying down the stretch of the regular season? Your one fear, your one concern about Coach Popovich is he would stick with his veteran big three too long in these playoff yep. games last night Tim Duncan didn't score first time in his playoff career he did not score a point he played mm -hmm. exactly zero seconds in the fourth quarter it's pretty significant it, it was like a watershed moment to me because if you recall a year ago against the Clippers in those seven games best spur on the floor for those seven games was Tim Duncan as he finally hit that wall that father time wall I'm not sure. Was he saving him for game five because it was too quick a turnaround off game three? But David West played all 12 minutes of the fourth quarter. And I got to tell you, I'm a Spurs nut. I didn't love it, Stephen A. And he took the most shots of any Spur in the fourth quarter, made two of them, two for six. He did a few nice things. He fights. He, he scraps. We know all that. It just, it just hurt my heart a little bit that at money time, Duncan wasn't in there at least for a little stretch to protect the rim from Russell Westbrook and Kevin Durant. So something changed well, big time. Are we going to see David West down every stretch from here on well, through whatever we got left? Let's understand something. David West came here to be a reserve. He yep. didn't come here to be in that kind of situation. So if he was placed in that kind of situation, then obviously it was because Greg Popovich thought it was necessary. And if you know anything about Greg Popovich, who, you know, I, I, I'm here to tell you is one of the best people you could ever meet. Uh, this guy, I don't care how he comes across his interviews and all of that other stuff. He's, he's, a, he's a good man. And on top of it all, he loves his players. And there is nobody that I can imagine that he has more love for than Tim Duncan. And so it just struck me the way it hit me, Skip. It came across as him being protective yep. of Tim Duncan Maybe. and recognizing that, you know, this moment, you don't have it. And so if this were Kobe Bryant or whatever, everybody would just be going ballistic and going off and talking about what Kobe has lost and all of this other yep. stuff. Um, and, and I'm not and obviously I don't think that's right, particularly with the, the, the atrocious circumstances he was working under. In the case of Tim Duncan, you, you ain't going to hear me say a negative word about this man. This man has been a, a treasure to the game of basketball. We're seeing far the time having emphatically kicked in and relatively quickly, I might add, because we expected to see some things from Tim Duncan yep. that we just haven't seen during these playoffs. And so it's just one of those situations where I don't care if he doesn't play a minute, the level of reverence, deference, and respect well, that sure. he deserves, he will always get from here. I can tell you that. No, I, I think we're both paying him respect, but yes. it, was, it was kind of a sad, momentous moment that on the bench, fourth quarter, yeah. wow. Yeah. Tough to yeah. watch. Mm -hmm. All right, but regardless, you guys still have the Spurs in seven with the final game there in San Antonio. Let's go to the Eastern Conference and the Cavs side.